Excuse me. Hey everybody. Well, today I'm going to be working on a little project here. So uh, this, believe it or not, pile of materials is going to hopefully turn into a little pig puppet or a pig muppet. And uh, so um, oftentimes we see these videos on YouTube or other platforms where they show these tutorials on how to make things. And oftentimes I think to myself, how easy is it to actually make it? Is it as easy as they make it look on the, uh, on the video? or on TV or whatever. And so um, I really do want to try this because the pig puppet is really cute. Let me show you a couple pictures of what it looks like. Now the video tutorial that I was watching is by a YouTube um, creator named Adam Krutinger. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. Um, I may be mispronouncing it, but Adam Krutinger. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And you can see his actual video of creating this um, little pig puppet. And I just thought, okay, well, I really want to try it because the, the puppet is really cute. And um, I think maybe I can pull it off. So I went shopping today and I think I found just about everything I'm going to need. So the materials that you're going to need to build this thing is you're going to have to start by getting some of this half inch foam. And I found this at uh, Joann's Fabrics. I couldn't find it at Hobby Lobby. They only had the inch thick stuff. And so I bought some of this. I bought two yards of this, which I'm sure is way more than I need. But I wanted to make sure I gave myself extra in case I screw up. And then also I have a feeling I'm going to end up making more than one of these because somebody I know is probably going to want one of these. So anyway, if it turns out good. Uh, also here we got some pink fleece. Um, Adam in his video suggests to use fleece for the outer skin. I don't know if I'm supposed to use the fluffier side here or the... Uh, not so fluffy side. I'm going to have to figure out which side I'm supposed to use, but his, uh, his pigs are kind of a lighter pink. They're almost like a tan colored. And, um, I decided I wanted more of a traditional pink pig. So, uh, I went for this over here. We got some, um, pipe cleaners. I only needed one, but of course you have to buy a whole package of them and I only need just a little bit of it. This is what's going to be used to make his little curly tail. And so I got some of these, I uh, got this at Joann's fabrics or no, I think I got that at Hobby Lobby. This is a ring. Um, I got this at Joann's Fabrics. This is the size that I think Adam used. And he uses this on the bottom of the puppet to give it some stability. It's just a little metal ring right there. I also got some uh, pink thread. Now my sewing skills are amateur at best. And so hopefully I can pull it off. Um, I may cheat and try to hot glue some spots. But he does have some sewing that goes on for some of this. And I will try it. But I went ahead and got some pink uh, thread to match so it looks you know blends in these here these i got from hobby lobby and this is from the wood pile of collection of wood parts that you can buy and these are these little knobs and i'm pretty sure this is the diameter that he used for the eyes for the pig and it has this flat side on it so i'm pretty sure it's these ones these are the one and a half inch ones so uh, hopefully that's the right ones and then i also got some of this felt this is the thicker felt it's a little more stiffer and this, I think, is going to be used for the inside of his mouth. And I think the black felt is going to be used for uh, his little hooves on his arms. Now, here are the patterns that you can buy from Adam's link in his video. And so I went ahead and did it. Uh, they're $25 to get these. And um, it's kind of pricey, but, you know, hey, he's the one that came up with this. So you got to give him some credit here. But anyway, uh, these are the patterns. You just print them out. I just went to FedEx, the FedEx office, and they printed all of these out for me. Um, the only ones that you have to kind of modify is this one. You're going to have to tape uh, this dotted line to uh, this one under here so that it becomes one big piece. And then you're going to start tracing all of these around the foam and around the materials. Okay, so now we are going to start by tracing this pattern on the foam. And this will tell you that it's one of the foam patterns and that you have to cut two of them. So we're going to trace around this. and try to do it as accurate as possible here just using a black sharpie marker here and yeah it might help to have more of a narrower tip one so of course this is not going to come out as good as adams adams the professional at this and he actually suggested that if you decide to do a puppet, you should probably um, 
start with one of the easier ones. This is actually one of the more complicated ones, so <laughs> I am definitely uh, doing this as an amateur, and yet I'm doing one of the more complicated ones here. Okay, let's just get all this around the edge here. Now there's these notches that he talks about. You can kind of see them here. You need to make those notches because you're going to match these up um, once you start gluing all of this together. So just kind of draw the, ha the uh, little hash marks here because you'll match it up with the other piece. Oh, except I just moved this a little bit, didn't I? Of course I did. All right, so let me center that back in. And hopefully I got that. These ones are a little... No, that's about right. Okay. All right, and it doesn't look like there's any on this side. Okay, so hopefully we got that right. So now we're actually going to flip this over and do this on this side. So let's do this all over again. Just the opposite. Have to figure out where the hash marks, because the hash marks aren't on this side of it. And when it comes to cutting this foam, um, he used a. I can't remember the name of the razor blade he used. It's kind of long but I'm not sure what kind of blades those are. I'm going to just use a standard X-Acto blade and hopefully that'll be good enough. He said that if you do use scissors to cut this, you need to make absolutely sure that you cut them straight up and down and perpendicular. All right, so uh, let me see. I'm not sure where the hash marks are going to go on this one. I guess here, but I'm going to have to try to figure out how to do it on the opposite way. All right, so let me get the next pattern to uh, trace on here. Okay, so what I did to get the hash marks on this other one is I just, if you shine a light through, you can see the hash marks and just trace them on the other side and then that way you can match them up. All right, so the next part now is going to be this one here. So this is the body front and you're going to need two of these. Now, Adam suggests that you actually put them back to back. Um, I guess you could actually, uh, um, you know, cut two of these separate and then glue them, but probably to save yourself a little extra work. You can just turn it into one piece. So this one's kind of tricky because it's really small. Now, I, don't, I think you don't have to be absolutely perfect on this. I mean, you know, as close as you can get. But, you know, since it is foam, it's a little more forgiving. So by the time you glue things, you can probably kind of smoosh things together. But, you know, you don't want to get too sloppy with it either. So, okay, so we'll just go like this. And then let's see, where's those hashed? Oh, here they are. There's a hash mark here, two of them, and there's two here. Okay, and then you want to make it go the other side because when you cut that, you're not going to know where those hash marks are. Okay, and now you just flip this the other way, and I already did the hash marks here, and you just line it up here. I think this is going to be the upper side of the little piggies body and just try to make sure you get this round part even here like that okay it's a little tricky working with this foam because it's hard to uh, write on it with this marker okay Keep on working your way around. Make sure you get a new marker, by the way. You don't want it drying out on you right in the middle of a, doing all this. Okay. And then those hash marks are over here and here. Okay, and then we're just going to continue it through like that. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, all right, so let me get the next part. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, traced out the pattern for the ears, the snout, and this is the mouth rim. And so, you know, to put them as close as you can so you don't waste as much foam as possible. Now I'm gonna try cutting these out with a, an X-Acto blade. This is a brand new blade. It's, 
And uh, these, I don't know, I might use scissors on these, but I'll try it with uh, the knife and see how that works first. So I'm going to use this cutting board. And uh, let me start with one of these big pieces here first. So let's try it and uh, see if this works okay. Boy, that blade is nice. This bone cuts very, very good. Okay, well, this might work. That cuts in there really good. Slices through it like butter, really. Okay, let me make sure I go over a little bit so we don't have any parts sticking. All right, so I'm off the board here. Let me get, uh, let me move the board over. So if you have a cutting pad on your desk or whatever, it will help you out a lot. I don't have any of those. So uh, here we go. Okay. To cut that little corner right there. So I'm not going to be absolutely perfect on the cutting of this, but like I said, the foam is forgiving because once you uh, start gluing all these in, you should be okay. Okay, let me slide this under here. Definitely having an, a brand new X-Acto blade is uh, a brand new fresh blade is the key to this because uh, it's kind of cut right through there. The scissors, like I said, those will probably work, but like Adam mentioned in his video, you want to make sure the lines are perpendicular because you want them to be flat because when you glue them together, you don't want the edges to be rounded or whatever. It'll make the uh, bond a little easier. That's my guess. Okay. All right, let's see, did I do that edge? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm off the board again. Let me slide that over. There we go. Okay. All right, let's take a look and see how this turned out. A little bit of an edge here that I missed. <clears throat> Let me get the board over here. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, this corner, I figured that would be a little bit of a trouble spot. Let's see what we didn't get. Okay, the corners of, of the tricky spot. Let me see here. All right, I think we got it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that turned out good. All right, let me get the rest of these cut out and I'll show you what that all looks like when it's done. Uh, we are now going to start working on these pieces. Now, these are the parts that I cut earlier and um, these little, cutouts right here and here and this part and this part we're actually going to glue these together because that's what ends up creating the curvature of these pieces so um, if you glue it like this and you put it together like this it's going to end up making this piece curve like that and that's what makes the curvature of the body now uh, on adam's video he used this glue it's like a contact cement but he said you can use hot glue which is what he used to use he said the only reason he switched to the contact cement is because he had he was putting on a puppet show and um, the uh, hot glue had uh, melted a little bit in a hot car and so one of the eyes of his puppets kind of dripped down and so that's why he doesn't use hot glue anymore but I'm not uh, worried about that I'm not leaving my um, mine in a uh, hot car so I got my hot glue gun ready to go here so let's just kind of start a little bit on here 
I we'll just have to do a little bit at a time because I don't want to screw anything up. So we're just going to kind of start putting these together like this. Okay. And it may take a little while for this to dry. So let me get my glue keeps slipping out here. Okay, let's try to get all this in here. The only problem with hot glue is it can be kind of messy. Okay, so we'll let this dry for a couple minutes here. Okay, let me add some more to this now. Let's see if I can go all the way down here. Okay, let's see how that goes. Try to fit all this in. This part here is going to be a little tricky. Try to line everything up, especially that end right there. I'm going to have to hold this for a few, so let me let this dry. Okay, so the hot glue is now dry, so we got all these seams together. We can kind of see how everything looks here. All right, so now this is where these little hash marks come in. So now we're going to start gluing these pieces together. So this piece has to go onto this piece, and it's going to go all the way around. So these hash marks match with those, comes around here, and then that these hash marks up here are going to uh, come together. So i got to hot glue all of this together here, and then I'm also going to have to do this side right here, and these hash marks also match. So we're going to make this kind of weird looking shaped thing right here. All right, so let me get all that hot glued together and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now the front is all glued together there. The little hashtags match. So now uh, I got to take this back side here and we're going to glue this edge to this edge all the way up to the top. And then these two lines have to match. That's how you know you got them aligned properly all the way up to the top. So let me get all that done. Okay, so the back of his body is completely put together, and it's kind of cool the way this is shaping together. Now, um, it's not the prettiest thing with the hot glue. That that uh, contact cement definitely would have made this a cleaner looking thing, but you're not going to see any of this anyway. It's going to be all covered up with fleece, and uh, any of these gaps I filled up with extra hot glue just to make sure that uh, it stayed sealed. So you can kind of see it's kind of this cool looking gourd looking thing. It's kind of funny. So yeah, it's very cool. So now the next step is we are going to take this mouth this uh, mouthpiece that we already cut before and these little uh, hash marks this is where these come into play you're going to match these up like this we're going to glue it right there and then we're going to make this go across like this and then we're going to glue this end right like that so it'll be like a little crossbar for his bottom jaw Okay, so now we have that all glued in place. So yeah, there we go. Now the next step here is we're going to put the nostril piece in. Now if you'll recall on the um, the pattern for this, there was two holes for the nasal uh, passages, the nostrils. And uh, on Adam's video, he actually cut those out and then he eventually would push the um, fleece in to make indentations for the nose. And uh, that's one way to do it, but I don't really think they showed up very well. So I'm just going to not cut the holes out. And I'm just going to put two black pieces of felt on here to represent the, the uh, nostrils. I think it'll show up way better. So now we're going to be gluing this in here. And there was a couple different ways you could do it. But the way I'm going to do it is uh, you'll notice that there's this little notch or this little uneven edge. So the back of this part of the, uh, the nostril here is going to go on there. And you're going to match up the uh, little mark here with the seam. And then this is just going to go in here like this. So I'll just kind of do it crudely here. And then I'm going to uh, glue this in. And then it'll just kind of try to, I'll try to make it fit flush. And then the, uh, the mouth plate that I was making out of that cardstock, the index cards, that didn't work. I, I didn't think it would. It just wrinkled up in the middle and it just ended up not working. So thank goodness. I was looking around and I, in the kitchen I found this, uh, this was actually um, a rubber made, these are those little plugs that you could put on your kitchen sink to keep the water from draining out and it was just a rubber disc. And I had one of these brand new in the package, it's probably been there for like 20 years, totally forgot about it. And it's exactly what I needed for this, it's got the, you know, the soft rubber thing for the mouth. So uh, I just cut it into the shape 
from that pattern. So now this is going to get glued into his mouth with that side first. So we're going to go like this. And it's going to go in behind there. And I'm going to have to uh, hot glue it in place. And then when this is bent forward, it's going to be the mouth like this. So let me get all of these parts glued in and then we'll go from there. Okay, so next we are going to finally start working on the fabric part of this. So you take these two pieces of the pattern and you actually, it's probably easier just to tape it. So uh, you match up these little hash marks so that they're going to go together like that. And then that way you can just make this all one piece. At least that's what Adam suggested in his video. So we are going to uh, do that. So let's try to trace this out. I'm still not sure if I'm going to sew this or if I'm just going to, um, I don't know if hot gluing fabric is going to work. I did find uh, at Joanne's Fabrics, I found that they have um, a glue made for fabric. And uh, I was going to buy some of it, but I just, I don't know. I'm not sure how good it works. Guess I should have watched a, a review on it. <laughs> okay, so let me see here. Let's keep going with this. By the way, we are using the um, the not as fluffy side of the uh, the felt. So I guess the fluffier side is going to be the outside of the puppet, the main skin. All right, and then we have this little indentation right here. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're just going to flip it over and then uh, trace around that. And then we're going to cut all these out. So let's get all that done. Okay, so now here are the pieces once you get them all cut out. So I'm still debating whether to hot glue these or sew them. I kind of feel like I should make one more of these and hot glue it just to experiment to see if it's going to work. But I kind of think maybe... Um, sewing is probably going to be the better thing because what you got to do is you got to sew these this, these two parts together and these two parts together. You're going to leave this one because that's where the mouth is. So when you put these together like this, you know, I could probably put a bead of hot glue along this edge here and, and stick these together. And it probably will be pretty strong because this is porous. But the only problem is, is when you put it right side out, are you going to be able to see the hot glue on the outside? That's what I'm not sure. And I don't know how strong it's going to be. Um, I don't, I just don't know. So maybe I should try it out with an experimental piece. But in the meantime, I've also got the old needle and thread. All right. So just for the heck of it, let's see if this is going to work. This is another piece I just cut out. Thank goodness I bought some extra felt. Okay. So let me just put a small bead of it on here. And then let's see how this actually is going to uh, to work here. Let's see if it's going to go this way. It's going to be hard to keep the uh, the bead from getting all over. All right, so let me just squeeze that a little bit so it soaks into the fabric. A little bit more here. Okay. I mean, if I can do it this way, it would be a whole lot quicker than trying to uh, um, sew all this because, man, that's that would be crazy. Uh, that's one thing about this glue. It's so stringy. Okay, let me go all the way through here. Okay. I mean, this might be a pretty strong bond for all I know, just because it is so porous, especially this fleece. Get it all the way to the very end here. Okay. All right. 
see how that works. Okay, so let me give this about two minutes to dry. I've been putting it right in front of a fan so it does it quicker, and then we'll see how that looks. Hmm, it's actually not too bad. I mean, you can, I don't want to pull on it too tight. I'm not sure if it's fully cured yet, but um, I mean, you can't really see the glue in there. You know, I can feel it, but I can't, there's a little bit right here that you can see. So, yeah, I don't know, this might work. I don't know how tight this is going to be uh, pulled around that puppet, uh, the main uh, foam body part of it. So maybe I'll try this, and if it doesn't work, then I can always just uh, cut new pieces and then just glue it. But this might be, I mean, that's a pretty strong bond right there. Hmm. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's give it a try. Okay, so I ended up changing my mind. <laughs> so this is one that I just sewed together, and then this is one that was the uh, the hot glue one. And, you know, it still works. I mean, the hot glue still works, and I'm, I'm actually, it's okay. Um, I just feel that these are really deep, and then on the one that I sewed, see how they're not quite as deep? I mean, there's, you can still see them, of course, but it's just not quite as, uh, you know, like a deep cut in there so I just I mean like I said my sewing skills are not that great but um, that's how, the one that's sewed and then that's the one that's got the hot glue I mean either way it does work I just think that this one looks better so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with sewing this stuff so now uh, let me grab the other one here so this is the other one I went ahead and sewed this one as well so that one's all done on the back here. So now what we got to do is we got to take the two back sides here. Um, let me see. I'm sorry, it's hard to get these arranged. Okay, so these are the two back sides right here. So now I got to um, sew these together. And then I also have to sew the fronts together like this. And that'll make the nice round part like the pig. All right, so let me get that all done. All right, so now this is all completely sewed together now. The back is all done, and uh, the front is also done. So now we're going to start working on putting the cloth part of his snout. So uh, we're going to take that fabric snout uh, piece here. This one's for the fabric, which is exactly the same as the, the foam one that we cut for his nose right here. Uh, let me see if I can move this up. So um, you have to actually uh, measure a little section of this. So when you turn this this way, you have to, uh, let me see if I can get the camera situated here. You have to actually put this right up on this edge right here. Put it right there. And then where these two uh, edges are, you have to make that little hashtags right there. This one here and this one here. And I'm not sure what that's for yet, but I'll find out. So uh, let me get this little piece of pink cloth here, and we're going to make the little schnoz. Okay, so now we got the nose all sewed in. I got to say, the more I do this, um, the better I get at it, even if it's still pretty amateur. <laughs> but anyway, all right. So uh, now the next thing is we're gonna we're gonna have to make the mouth plate. So um, I bought this red um, felt, but it's really kind of a stiff felt, and I'm wondering if it's too stiff. I wonder if I should have gotten the softer stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and make the little hashtags, and hopefully it'll work. All right, so I decided to scrap this uh, felt, the, the more stiffer kind, because see how it kind of bends and it doesn't really turn very well? So um, I went ahead and went back to Hobby Lobby and got the softer felt. So yeah, that'll be much better for the mouth. So now um, we are going to take the the pink part again. And now uh, there's the, the snout. So we're going to be sewing this in to this little flap right in here. And then we'll be matching up the, uh, the little marks right there. And then I'm going to have to go all the way around with this and then sew the uh, end of it on this end. So let me get all that done. All right. so. 
I don't know, it looks like this thing is way bigger than what I actually have made for the material here because um, I even kind of started trimming down a little bit of the nose right here. But even the circumference of this looks uh, way bigger than um, what I got going on on the bottom of this. So I don't even know if this is going to fit. I do have to glue this red part into uh, this part here, the rubber. And then from there, we stretch the material over this whole thing. So let's see if I can get it to work. Okay, so lo and behold, I finally got this on. Uh, this is about an hour, an hour's worth of work. I, I don't know. So I ended up trimming a little bit more on the nose because the nose was just too big. Um, you know, when I had these printed, the, uh, the pattern at uh, FedEx, I'm not sure what scale it was because when I was looking at Adam's video, his puppet, especially down here, is much more narrow. And also I had a lot of extra, uh, see, I had to trim all this off. I had a lot of extra stuff hanging off the bottom, the foam here, just to make that look a little more like what he has. He said the diameter of his on the bottom here is five inches, and, and mine is way bigger than that. And, and in fact, I even bought the ring that he, he recommends. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, maybe I printed these in a different uh, dimension or something as far as, uh, yeah, I really don't know. So, because when I went up over there to have it made, those those patterns, I wasn't really sure what scale it was. Also, his nose, this part here, looks like it fits perfectly around the edge while mine kind of hangs over a little bit. Of course, he's a really good stitcher, so uh, that could be the difference. Also, in looking at his, I think he actually used the uh, the smoother side of this, fe the, uh, this fleece. Because see how it's like not quite as fluffy on this side of it? And... Um, I thought that he used the fluffier side because I thought it would look better to have this side showing. But, oh well, too late now. I mean, <laughs> I've gotten too far into this. And then I also had to readjust the mouth because the red part here was a little too far back. And so I had to kind of uh, the, take the glue off and then re, you know, reposition it a little bit further ahead now. So let me get all this extra stuff off here. So let me show you how this works. So now see you can get his little you can get his little <laughs> there's his little mouth now and he's got a little piece of stuff stuck on his side so yeah i mean he looks pretty pretty much like the one that i saw in adam's video he, this one just looks a lot bigger for some reason i think i just had a different scale going on here and i'm not sure that each page was the same scale as the other parts i guess i should have checked on that but i wasn't really sure i thought i just assumed they were already you know, in scale or whatever. All right, well, anyway, uh, I think we're going to start working on the arms now, so let's get started on that. <laughs> okay, so now we're um, on to using these arm patterns here. So we're going to do this one and this one. So we're just going to go ahead and trace these out. And uh, there's also the notches on there as well. So... Uh, Keep on going around here. I kind of wish I would have used the other side of this material, but oh well. I thought about doing it for his arms just to do something different, since this side isn't quite as uh, fluffy as the other side is. Okay, and then there's these notches right here, 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 and uh, there's another one right over here. Let's see, all right. Extend those out. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and do this one. All right, I have a hard time seeing a lot of times. I have a really bad eye floaters in my right eye and it makes me see kind of double sometimes. I need to go in and have them checked, but uh, I'm scared about what the surgery is going to entail. <laughs> so sometimes it makes it hard to do this kind of stuff. All right, so now we flip these over so that we can do the other arm. They're just opposite. And I don't think there's notches on this piece. I'll have to look on the other side again. Let me see. No, there's no notches on this one. Let's see, this one does have notches. Um, I need to see if I can uh, match these up. I think it's right here. 
and where's the other one? Right here. And the other two are down here. Okay. All right, so now do this one. Oops, went a little off. Pardon the crow in the background, if you can hear him. <laughs> I, I feed the squirrels in the morning, and sometimes this, the crows like to come out here and dig into the food, which drives me crazy because I, I mainly want them for the squirrels. But <laughs> And then the squirrels, uh, they go out there and they chase them off, which is good. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and bring this in, this one, this one. All right, so now let me cut these out, and then we'll get ready to start putting the arms together. All right, so here's what it looks like when they're cut. And um, we're just gonna be putting these together like this. And then we're just gonna uh, stitch up the sides on this one here and this one here, leaving that open and then this open on both of these. So let me get that done. Okay, so these are all stitched up now. And they're kind of like a little sock when you're done. Okay, so those are all finished. So now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making um, the hooves. So we're going to be needing this fabric hoof thing. Now, if you're going to make eight, like it says here, if you're going to uh, be making legs, you need to make eight of these things. I'm not going to be making um, any feet on this, but I would also recommend don't use uh, the really stiff um, felt because I tried it on this one. So you already stitched it and you got to flip this inside out and there's no way to flip this inside out. It's just too, it's just too firm. So uh, use the softer black felt like that, and then just make four uh, pieces using that, uh, that pattern. And then we're going to be stitching around this edge here and just over this M shape and over here, just leave this part. You don't stitch that. So there's four of these. So let me get all these stitched together and then we'll see what is next. Okay. So now these are all sewed together. And let's see, so now uh, we're going to take the next step here. So what we're going to do is you're going to take the hoof and it's you, you leave it inside out. At least that's the way I sewed it. And you're going to go to this edge here and you're going to tuck this in like this. And it's kind of tricky. You have to make sure it fits inside here. Okay, and then just get these edges even like this, the pink and the black. Get them evened out. And then once you got it nice and even like that, then you are going to stitch all around here. Uh, I think you use black thread. I think that's what Adam used. So um, we'll, we'll do the stitching on both of those. So let me get that done. All righty. So these are all sewed together now. Got that stitching going on. All right, so now uh, we're going to turn these right side out. Let's turn these back outward. Hope these turned out okay. I don't even know how these are going to look. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks great. There's his little arm. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, let me uh, do the same for this one here. Try to get this turned around. Once you get to the hoof here, it's a little easier. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. All right, so there's his little, there's his little pig arms. Okay, so now um, we're gonna stuff these with some stuff here. So I think I'm just gonna use cotton balls. There's not like a whole lot of stuff that you have to do here. So let me grab a handful of these cotton balls real quick here. I suppose you can use whatever you want. I think Adam in his video used fiber fill and uh, I don't have any of that stuff laying around. So we'll just use cotton balls. Stuff that in here. Don't know how many I'm gonna need. Let's see, here's another one. These are the jumbo size, which is good. Okay. Probably take about three or four of these, I would imagine. Doesn't matter which way you put them in. See, I'm not sure how many I should do. Let's see, how much should I 
Does it have to go all the way to the top here? Let me see if I put one more in there. I can kind of smoosh them in. I'm guessing that's probably fine because I think we're going to be stitching mostly this part to the body. <clears throat> okay. There we go. There's his little arms. All right, and then uh, I'll go ahead and do this one here in a little bit. But now we're going to have to decide where we are going to put on the arms onto the side of him here. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure this out somewhere over here, I would imagine. And I think we're going to be stitching that on. So, uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's good to see some more characteristics being brought onto him. All right, so let me... Um, figure out where I'm going to put these, and then I will uh, go ahead and stitch those on, and then I will show you what all of that looks like. Okay, well, I am definitely not going to be getting a job at Jim Henson Studios anytime soon. Um, yeah, I didn't, I don't know, these arms did not turn out the way I wanted. They both look totally different on each side. I, it just, I'm like I said, I am not a sewing uh, master by any, any stretch. So this one here, I, you know, I was I was looking at Adam's video. He said he used a ladder stitch on these. I checked a video out on how to do it, and I'm not sure how he did a ladder stitch on this. He didn't really show that. He just kind of did a time lapse, and I kind of wish he would have been a little more detailed about that. I just ended up just stitching it through here and through the inside. Um, I don't know if you can see it in there. It was kind of hard to go through the foam, and sometimes... I was trying to get the needle through where the hot glue was on the inside of the seams and it wouldn't go so I had to kind of move the whole thing over and so yeah I just I mean that's the way this one looks it looks a little weird and then on this side it's a totally different look it's almost like it's a little twisted right here and I don't know I guess you know it's gonna have to do because I can't go back and redo that now I mean I could by cutting all those threads but I am not going to try to go do that. I mean, that's just going to be a huge mess. Like I said, this is my first time doing this, so I can't be too harsh on myself. But, uh, I mean, at least he's got his arms on. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is mostly more of an experiment than anything. But All right, so now the next thing I've been trying to work on is his eyes. Um, so these original uh, balls that I had gotten, these were the I think these were the one-and-a-half-inch wood balls, and I painted them white. But these are too big. Um, I was trying to figure out how big they were on Adam's video. And then uh, he did have a link because somebody asked what size he used. And, and uh, the link said they were one inch. But the one inch ones are really small. So I don't think it's the one inch. I actually think they are the, um, the one and a half inch. That's what these are. And these look more like what he used. Um, I will say these ones, they were, they were, I don't know why these were so hard to paint. But they were. I had a really hard time painting these. I originally tried spray paint, and the spray paint would not stay on there. I just used Krylon. And then I tried using Tamiya, and then Tamiya wouldn't really stay on there either. I don't know if there was oils on here, but I sanded these to make them smoother, and um, I couldn't get the paint to go on. So I ended up using model paint and just painted it on there, and then I sprayed it on top of that. I probably should have just got some craft acrylic paint when I was at Hobby Lobby. And I was even looking at it and thinking I might need it for this, and then... But anyway, um, I finally got these painted. Now the big question is, what do I do for the pupils? On Adam's video, he just had some round stickers, uh, black stickers that were on here, and that looks good, but I do have some stickers, but it's hard to get the stickers to stay on a round surface like this, so I don't know what he did. So then I was trying some other things, like maybe um, like using some uh, decals that I had left over from a model kit that looked like this. I don't know if they, uh, I'll be able to focus on those. But these are just too small. I mean, they're not going to look right. Kind of would give them some kind of different character. And so then uh, I was thinking more like the style of Cookie Monster. Um, Cookie Monster had a really cool... Remember his googly eyes? And the way they did that is they took a black disc like this. And then they had a nail go through it like this. And, they, and then they had the nail go through the eye... And then they didn't put the nail in all the way, but because the um, this thing spins, see how it spins like that? That's what made the googly eyes. And so I kind of want to try that, um, but these nails are way too big. And I was, let's see, where's the other ones? So I was experimenting with this one. 
well, I got a small hole in that one. Actually, let me see. It's this one here. So I was trying with this one, but the nail is just too big. So tomorrow, because it's kind of late right now, I'm going to go to Home Depot and see if I can find a really small little nail that I can put in there and try these out, because I think it'd be really cool if he had googly eyes. But then again, I don't know. It may be too silly, because I don't know if I want them to be that silly looking. So I may end up just sticking with these. That's why I made so many of these. And I'm, I may just go ahead and just use some Sharpie marker or something on there and just make some round dots or something. I really don't know yet. Still, still a little bit unsure about that. So anyway, that's as far as I got for now. So let's get started with placing the eyes on whatever I decide to do. Okay, so this has been quite the project just for the eyes. I don't know why the eyes have become such a hard part of this whole thing. It's probably one of the more easier ones. I think it's just because I chose to go about it a different way. But anyway, um, so I went ahead and decided to make these eyes the googly eyes like you saw with Cookie Monster. So uh, it has a little pupil that kind of spins around like this. Let me see, see how, how they just jiggle around like that. And that's how Cookie Monster's eyes were done. And all it is is a nail that is holding on to this little this little disc. So there's two of these. So if you decide to make this for kids, you may not want to go this route because that nail is going to stick out. If you look closely at some footage of uh, Cookie Monster from the older days when that show was on, um, you'll see the nail sticking out. I don't know if they still do it this way on the on the uh, Cookie Monster. I'm assuming it's still the same, but that's how they make his his eyes jiggle around. So I went ahead and did that, but it, it was a whole nother thing. I mean, to hammer um, a nail into a round surface like this is really tricky. I found myself, I think I bent like five or six nails to get that right. And you need really tiny nails. So the nails I'm using are these. They're actually like little brads. And these are the uh, from Everbuilt, the number 19, and they're just one half inch nails. They're really tiny. So those are probably the better ones to use because I was using some bigger ones and it just wasn't working out. So yeah, the smaller, the better and just make sure the nail doesn't go all the way in so that this thing has enough room to uh, jiggle around. So the other thing is, um, let's see, what else was I trying to get done? Okay, this here. So you have to make a plate that's gonna go on the inside of the head. That's gonna go down inside here. And um, I just made this out of styrene plastic. I just cut a piece of styrene plastic. I don't know what the thickness of that is, but it's pretty thin. And then I just cut it and smoothed it out and sanded it. And then uh, I measured out where the eyes, I kind of want the eyes close together, but I think they're gonna be separated a little bit once it goes on the puppet on the puppet's head and so uh, just measure it out where the holes are going to go and then to fasten everything in you're going to need these screws right here so these are the number 12 and they're one and a fourth inch screws that's what's going to go inside so that you can uh, screw them into this so you're going to have this uh, you'll also have to take this and you're going to have to measure on here where you want these to go and just put a little mark as you can see i got a mark right there so you're going to have to cut a hole in the top of his head. So you're going to have to use something. I'm just going to use this. It's a, an ice pick. And just poke a hole through there so the screws can come out. So you're going to um, take this plate and you're going to have it inside the head, right where those are, and then put the screws in. And then the screws are going to stick out of the top here. And then from there, you just screw on the, uh, the eyes. And that's how that's going to work. So uh, that's the way Adam did it in his video. So that's how I'm going to do it. But, you know, like, like he said, you can do this however you want. That's kind of the joy of it. You can do whatever you want with whatever eyes. Maybe you can just put these eyes and glue them onto here. Or maybe find some other thing for the eyes and use these. You know, whatever you want. I mean, it'll change the whole look of the puppet. But I'm just trying to make it, you know, somewhat similar to what Adam did. So, let's see. I think that's pretty much all that we're at right now. Oh, man. So, let's go. Oh, I should also mention, when you are, uh, I use this tiny little drill bit right here to drill the hole into the little piece right here and what that is by the way is these are googly eyes if you buy some googly eyes i just went ahead and cut some of these open to get the little black disc out of there and that's what i use to make the little pupils on his eyes right there and then in order to uh make them googly like that you got to cut a hole in there so see that tiny little hole so i just took this really small um drill bit and just kind of hand turned this and until I could get the hole in there. And you need to make it off center, try to get it close to the very edge because it needs to be off center and that's what makes it, you know, so that when you spin this around, it kind of, go it goes in a goofy way. All right, well, I think that's it. So let me get the eyes installed and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so now I got the little guy's eyes on and um, I gotta say that was not an easy task. This, I had to make that a little smaller, that bracket 
So while you are trying to screw in those screws, uh, the screws have a habit of wanting to grip into this foam. And so you're turning it and turning it and it's starting to twist up the foam and it's starting to twist up the uh, material. And I don't know how Adam did it. He kind of, there was a jump cut in there. So he might've had some issues with his as well. But, um, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I had to really struggle with it. So uh, just know that if you're going to do it with this method, it's going to be um, a little bit difficult. You really have to get the hole big enough for those screws to go through the foam and the uh, material here, and then finally be able to screw these on. But I will say the eyes look really great. I mean, look at that. You can see the little googly eyes now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really glad I went with the uh, Cookie Monster eyes. I think these look great. All right, so now the next step is I'm working on the ears. Now, the way that Adam chose to do the ears, he doubles up the, um, the pink material, and then he puts a layer of what he called liner foam on the top. He said he could also use uh, felt. So when you're done, you stitch it all three layers together, and then you cut around the edge so that you have the ear. But the problem with this is when you try to turn this right side out, this is even the, this being the softer foam, uh, softer felt, you can't get it to go, uh, you know, inside out. In fact, this is the result of the first one. It, just, it doesn't even look right. It's got a rounded tip, and I don't think I can get it all out of there. And you can see the, uh, the stitching and everything else. So I ended up scrapping this idea, and I didn't even try to turn this one around. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and take the, um, the ear patterns that we can see here, and I went ahead and remade some uh, pink ones. And then I'm just pinning them together. I'm just going to sew around the edge, and, but not this bottom one. So I already did that with this one. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this right side out. And then once I do, uh, to give it some firmness, because this is going to be, I mean, this might be strong enough to, uh, you know, keep this from, I don't know, it may not fall down, but I kind of want it to have some kind of firmness. So what I did is I took some of these stiff, stiffer uh, foam, and I'm just going to slide this strip in here, and then that'll add the stability that it needs to keep them upright. Okay, so let me get all that finished. All right, so now his ears are on. There we go. And he's looking pretty good, I gotta say. Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with the way he's turning out, considering that my sewing skills are horrible. Now, the only thing I goofed up on is when I was drawing the pattern out for his ears, I used a ballpoint pen or a Sharpie marker or whatever. And so once I stitched it and then flipped it uh, right side out, unfortunately, some of the pen shows through on his seam right here. So I have some per, uh, pen marks on his ears, unfortunately. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I was thinking about painting it, but <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll just have to leave those on, unfortunately. That's really too bad that that showed through. I almost made another set of ears, but after already making four sets, because the other failures here, I just didn't want to make any more. But anyway, he's looking pretty cute already. So now, uh, the last step is his tail, and so um, this is a piece of the, uh, the uh, fleece, and I think I'm going to use, I'm gonna use the, the uh, smoother side for his tail. I'll have that on the outside, and then we're just going to take this pipe cleaner, and um, Adam said he made his four inches long. I think I'm just going to do, I'm, I'm doing mine at four and a half inches. So uh, here, let me move him back a little bit here. And then all we're going to do is, um, sorry about that, we're going to get all this out of the way first. Okay, so <laughs> we're just going to um, fold down the, uh, the tips of these so that you're not poking the, uh, the wire through your material on both sides here. And then, there we go. And then we're just going to put that in here, and then we're just going to... Um, roll this up and then sew it together and then once that's done we can sew it to the uh the back of the little piggy and here he is all complete now and whoo man i cannot believe how much work this was i spent four days working on him and one night i stayed up all night i was kind of obsessed and i couldn't quit working on him so uh, yeah, a lot of work, but I think he turned out pretty good. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. I've always used to love the Muppet Show, and sometimes they would have close-ups of the puppets or the Muppets, and I, I was looking at them and thinking, you know, how do they make those? You know, you could sometimes see the, the material and stuff on them, but you couldn't really tell what was on the inside. I think this is made very similar to the way the Muppets are made, especially with all the foam on, this, on the inside. Um, here's what his tail looks like on the back now. I just got all that finished. 
looks very cute. I'm glad I made it slightly longer to get a little bit more curl in there. And so, you know, he's not perfect. I made tons of mistakes on this. And um, even on Adam's channel, uh, Adam Krutinger, by the way, I was mispronouncing his name, so I apologize for that. Um, but he talks about how this isn't the puppet to start with if you are first trying this out, because this is one of the more complicated ones. So, uh, yeah, he's right. It, it, there's a lot of work that goes into this. As for how much this cost, I don't even know. I have all the receipts, and uh, I'm going to try to add it up. I'm kind of scared to see how much I spent. Just, uh, you know, prepare yourself. You're going to make a lot of mistakes, as I did. I had to make the ears four times. I had to make the, the little uh, hoofs twice. Also, um, you know, you can change this. There's so many things you can do to change everything in the way it looks. On Adam's piggy, uh, he didn't have the, the nostrils. He just had indentations here. And I definitely wanted something to stand out on the front. And I experimented with oval-shaped ones uh, up and down or oval, uh, you know, horizontal or uh, teardrop-shaped ones. And I eventually just settled for these round ones, put them kind of close together and near the bottom. I mean, if you arrange them higher and further apart, it'll change the whole look of the nose. The eyes, the same thing. You know, originally I started out with these big ones that were way oversized and eventually went with uh, these. And you can put whatever kind of pupils you want on there. In this case, I did the, uh, you know, the... Uh, little uh, cookie monster effect because I always thought the cookie monster's eyes were really cool. And uh, so anyway, I mean, this is just really cool. I, I think it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work. Um, you know, when you watch those how-to videos, they, um, they tend to do a lot of editing and, you know, they make it look so easy <laughs> until you try it and then you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. So if you decide to take on a project like this, just know it is going to be a lot of work. If you have a sewing machine or sewing skills, it's going to help you out a ton because I did everything by hand on this. But uh, yeah, it's a really, really cool project to work on. And I'm glad I managed to finally finish it. <whistles> hmm, I guess Roy stepped out for a while. Well, I guess it's up to me to finish out this video. Don't forget to check out the Adam Krutinger channel. He's the one that does all kinds of really cool puppets and shows all different kinds of ways of making them. That's how I was inspired. We'll leave a link down in the description below. Yup, it's right there, and it'll be a video showing how to make me, but he does a much more professional job. Don't tell Roy I said that. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. That always helps. So in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody!